Tonight, the Liberals commit funding for the Augusta Highway duplication, but is it enough? And Sanjeev Gupta's solar dream gets the green light. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening, thanks for your company. The Augusta Highway is set to be improved, with the coalition promising $64 million for it if re-elected. But some have dismissed the announcement as a last-ditch attempt to win votes. It's the highway industry body say is due for a duplication. And now an election promise may mean the dream of dual lanes between Port Wakefield and Port Augusta is one step closer. I've said for quite some time this road uh, will, in, in the fullness of time, have to be duplicated. It's a massive trade and transport tourism route and we need to plan for that and then fund it appropriately. The coalition pledging $64 million to upgrade sections of the national road if re-elected. Federal member Rowan Ramsey says the state government will take the lead on the project, but it's unclear what parts of the 200-kilometre corridor will be tended to. All those things are for engineers to sort out and why we haven't gone to that stage yet because this is an electoral commitment. But the plan has its critics, with State Shadow Transport Minister Tom Kutsantonis describing the announcement as a sham. I think it's a desperate attempt maybe in the last few days of a political campaign to um, try and draw some votes in. Recent costings by the RAA estimate the entire duplication will cost around $2 billion. Many now questioning how much work can be done with just $64 million. I'm not quite sure that that's going to make the grade. I think it's just a pledge that's been put out there. But Rowan Ramsey says it's about getting work started on this large project. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. A 35-year-old man has been arrested in Kadena after police found a cut-down 22 rifle and 49 rounds of ammunition in his vehicle yesterday. Just over a gram of methamphetamine, drug paraphernalia and a knife were also found inside the man's Ford Falcon sedan. The man has been arrested and charged with an aggravated count of possessing a prescribed firearm without a licence, possessing ammunition and trafficking a controlled drug. He was refused bail and is set to appear in the Kadena Magistrates Court tomorrow. Sanjeev Gupta's Kultana solar farm near Wyala is a step closer to reality. The state government has given the 280 megawatt project the green light to proceed, with work expected to begin soon. A sunny day for Sanjeev Gupta. His long-awaited Kultana solar farm development finally receiving a tick of approval from the state government. This is another milestone in uh, Sanjeev Gupta's vision for a gigawatt of renewable energy. The $350 million project is the first in Sanjeev Gupta's renewable energy plan for the region. The announcement comes nearly a year after securing a contract to provide power to major SA businesses. Of course, the signing of that contract has underpinned the development of uh, the Coltana uh, solar power station. 350 jobs will be created during construction, with a further 10 ongoing jobs when finished. We will have between two to four uh, apprentices that will commence during the construction phase. And the important thing is we then will take them on into the O&M phase. Council CEO Chris Cowley says it will make Wyala attractive for investors. We're starting to see benefits from re reduced electricity prices, which would be a fantastic outcome, and then in turn drive further investment broadly in our community. This project is a step forward for renewable energy in Wyala. It will lower energy prices and bring investment into South Australia. Confidence to other investors that... Um, Wyala is certainly a city going places. Shari Ham, 7 Spencer Golf News. Port Lincoln police have arrested two men and a woman after they were allegedly involved in stealing a car from Cummins over the weekend. Police locating the stolen ute on New West Road in Port Lincoln Saturday afternoon. The theft follows a string of robberies and break-ins in Cummins, with nine vehicles being targeted over the past several weeks. Police are encouraging anyone with information to come forward and contact Crime Stoppers. Questions about improving outcomes for Indigenous people dominated an election forum in Port Augusta today. Candidates for the Division of Grey vowing to do their bit for First Nations people. 
As the battle for votes in Grey enters its final week, there was a hot topic rolling off the tongue in Gladstone Square. Aboriginal culture. Aboriginal people. Aboriginal First Nations people. The four candidates at the Amiwara Media Election Forum acknowledging more needs to be done to close the gap in the electorate. We've had Aboriginal people and issues ignored for too long. Labor's Karen Bolton says her party's re-establishment of the National Health Equity Council will allow regional leaders to drive service delivery and policies. But at the core of that is um, Aboriginal people being at the centre of that decision making. While most messages were directed at older onlookers, Greens candidate Candace Champion was focused on youth, campaigning to lower the voting age at future elections. The young people are the, our future, so they're the ones who will be taking up this mantle. Independent Richard Carmody echoing calls for improved youth outcomes, with his flagship job guarantee plan hoping to have wider flow on benefits. With the extra income and with the security, then their attention can turn to health and education and that sort of stuff. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Port Lincoln plays host to an aged care forum and local students take part in the latest round of NAPLAN testing. Welcome back. Aged care providers have voiced their concerns at a potential financial emergency facing the industry. Port Lincoln residents gathered today, calling on the government to do more. A day of action for aged care services around the region as they struggle with increasing financial pressure. Many care homes around the region cutting staff to reduce costs. We tend to be overlooked and forgotten and we're the people who have kept this place going for years. So it's time we step to the fore a little bit. Residents and staff from the Matthew Flinders home coming together on the Port Lincoln foreshore showing their support. The group voicing their concerns over the future of aged care if they don't receive financial assistance soon. 43% of aged care facilities in Australia are running at a loss. That means that every day that they're opening the door, they're actually losing funds. Mr McGowan says it's unacceptable that more than 120,000 older Australians are unable to access the care they need. He says the government's acknowledged the crisis in aged care by calling for the Royal Commission, but he says more needs to be done. And when organisations are already losing funds, um, we can't wait. We need some action and we need it now. The I Care for Aged Care campaign calling on the government to support their fight ahead of this weekend's election. Hopefully we're making our small contribution to a much larger effort that's going on all around Australia today. Nathan Richter, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The York Peninsula is set to get a new grain port at Wallaroo. Construction could create up to 60 new jobs in the area and offer grain growers easier access to international markets. Once dubbed the barley capital of the world, the York Peninsula once again will showcase its grains on the world stage. Teaports, the company responsible for building SA's first farmer and private equity partnership port at Lucky Bay, is looking to expand and has the YP in its sights. It's just an alternate way to get the grain from Wallaroo out uh, internationally. A $65 million grain port has been announced to be built in Wallaroo, offering farmers in the York and Mid-North an alternative supply chain. Teaport says grain growers are excited about the extra competition in the grain market. Creating um, competition amongst the grain industry as well, which is a good outcome for our agricultural industry. Council also excited about the potential job prospects for the Copper Coast. Um, probably 20 to 25 um, permanent positions and then of course during the peak season that could go uh, increase to 55 positions. Construction is expected to begin in 2020 with the site operational in 2021. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. NAPLAN testing got underway for thousands of kids in our region this morning. 500 schools will swap pen and paper for a computer with many undertaking their assessment online this year. Years 3, 5, 7 and 9 will be participating. Students will be assessed in four areas, including reading, writing, spelling and numeracy. It's also the
the beginning of a new era, with South Australia working towards transitioning all schools to online NAPLAN by next year's assessment. Good luck to all the kids there. Broken Hill has received an award nomination for being smart. The Silver City was named a finalist in the 2019 Regional Smart City of the Year Award after a wave of new technology was installed across the town. A silver city, but also a smart city. We recognise that we're moving down the right path and providing for our community what global communities are expecting. The 2019 Smart Cities Conference will be held at the end of the month. A part of the event is a series of awards recognising achievement in the development of Australian cities. In the wake of multiple tech upgrades around Broken Hill, most recently in Patton Park, City Council has been named a finalist in the regional category. We one of the first regional councils in Australia to actually have their smart city framework in place a couple of years ago. Smart city technology locals can spot around the town include the new bins in the CBD, the wind and solar powered lighting poles in Patton Park and the free Wi-Fi in local hotspots. All that technology aiming to increase efficiency and reduce costs for council. If it's creating a smart workforce, we're able to look at how we can improve productivity. Miss Andrews says there's future plans to expand the rollout of smart technology across the city. There's some really high level uh, international and national strategic uh, smart city people presenting at that conference so we'll take the opportunity to learn while we're there as well. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Good stuff there. Tourists will soon no longer need to brave the elements at Warabra's iconic silo art with plans to erect a new shelter. The $16,000 structure helping cater for an increase in visitors. A picture-perfect view but with no protection from the weather. Warabra's silo art has been turning heads but has left many standing on the side of the road. They are coming. But at the moment there is nowhere for them to shelter if it's hot or cold. That look is set to change. $16,000 donated through the FRRR's Tackling Tough Times Together grant program has meant that the town can invest in a sheltered viewing location. It is amazing the number of caravans that are now turning in the intersection of our main street and heading down to the silos to have a look. It comes as more tourists stop to admire the art. The local Progress Association hoping the protection will encourage visitors to stop and take in the town's site and history. The um, history of Murray Park, uh, who the bloke was, and what he was famous for and why they ded dedicated the park and a memorial to him. But in the meantime, with winter approaching, still pack an umbrella just in case. Hopefully between July and December, will have the shelter built, which will be built by an uh, engineering firm in Warabra. Dominic Beaton, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We'll have a wrap-up of the region's netball, tennis and soccer scores. And we'll also have the latest weather forecast. Hello again. The Elliston Sports Centre's $65,000 upgrade is nearing completion, with the final stages being developed. Upgrades include enlarging the veranda, floor space and replacing the building's windows. Management says the upgrades have been long overdue. Years ago we established what we needed to upgrade and we've sort of been working on a plan and um, just been going through applying for grants, working with the council to tick off um, other upgrades that we wanted to do. The Sport Committee says the upgrades will provide extra space and added safety for the 47-year-old building, which was showing signs of age. If all goes to plan, the upgrade is expected to be completed by the end of the month, just in time to host the grand final. Well, winter may be at our doorstep, but Broken Hills tennis players are still slogging it out on Thursday nights. Here's Patrick Reinke with a wrap-up of the region's local sport. The Broken Hill tennis season is nearing its end with finals commencing in the recent round. On a cold night last week, two matches were played. Nathan Crabb and True and Rollins of the backhands went straight through to next week's grand final, beating serves three sets to one. Serves will take on top spins in the prelim this Thursday after they down drop shots. Switching to soccer now and staying in the Silver City, St Joe's powered past Alma, while a hat-trick to Jordan Cox saw West defeat Celtic in a high-scoring affair. There were also plenty of goals scored in Port Lincoln. Fergus Tom found the back of the net three times and Aaron Simpson twice as South Coast 
thumped Seacole Masters. They'll face Lincoln Knights next weekend in a top of the table clash after they beat Lincoln City Raiders 2-0. In the MPL State League 2, Northern Demons had a win, while Savoy had a one-all draw in the SA Amateur League. Lastly, in Wyala, Croatia upset Lions 3-1 and Steele drew with Westlands 3-all. Switching to netball now and starting in Port Pirie, Ashley Possingham and Penny Mouchhouse starred for Central Risden, who had a narrow one-goal win over Solis. Blue Wren had it easy over Port, with Kirby Simons named Player of the Week. In Wyala, Warriors, YCW and True Blue took the chocolates. Up in Port Augusta, there were two cracking matches. Railways downed Magpies by a couple, and St Joseph's beat Vikings by five. Round two in Port Lincoln saw Imperial, Wayback and Warnilla Rangers victorious. Up in the northern areas, Oruru, Southern Flinders and Broughton Mundura scored wins. While in Great Flinders, Cummins Capenny had a good win and United Yelana defeated Ramblers. That's sport for this week and if you want your local results on TV, email us at localsport at sca.com.au. Thanks Pat. And time to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Louise. Good evening. It was a sunny day across the region with temperatures in the mid to high 20s. Port Augusta was fine with a top of 22 degrees, while at Port Lincoln and Broken Hill, all 20 and Adelaide was partly cloudy and 21. On the satellite now, patchy cloud continues to linger in the south ahead of a cold front which is unlikely to produce any rain. Clear skies elsewhere as a high pressure system over the north continues to dominate. On the waters now, easterly winds turning nor'easterly reach reaching 15 knots with seas rising to a metre. The sun will rise over our region a little after 7.10 with sunset expected just after 5.30. Tomorrow's weather is shaping up to be a carbon copy of today. Port Augusta 22 degrees, Coffin Bay 20, Clare a little cooler but clear and 18 and Adelaide fine and sunny with a top of 20 degrees. Looking ahead, the conditions are looking a little wet over the weekend. Port Lincoln fine and sunny through till Saturday with showers and a top of 21 predicted. It's a similar story for Cleve and Woodner. While it will be fine and sunny through till Friday before a shower on Saturday with a top of 23. Port Augusta will reach a balmy 25 degrees by Friday before some weekend rain and an expected high of 23. Similar conditions expected in Port Pirie through till Friday with clear skies and temperatures in the low to mid 20s. Clare and Broken Hill will be a little cooler with temperatures in the high teens through till the weekend but remaining clear. And that's your weather forecast for tonight. Enjoy the sunny weather while you can and be prepared to bring out the umbrella this weekend. But for now John it's back to you. Thanks Louise and that's the local news this Tuesday evening thanks for your company. I'll have some updates later tonight but until then enjoy your evening here on 7. Good night. <laughs>